Hello and welcome to the Dev Tip Show. This is my show. It's on YouTube. You can watch it for free. You thought we were done with the client section. Well, you're wrong. I thought we were done with the client section too, but it turns out, you know, a lot of you guys in the comments of the last video pointed out a lot of things that, uh, that I could have done better. This is a perfect opportunity to revisit and rethink a few important things. Number one, uh, I think I can do better on these links down here below. See how the line goes all the way out? This is because all of these logos are inside of a box. It's all the same length as, as each other, right? They have a minimum, uh, I think they have a min width of like 200 and something or something like that. So, so this line under it goes as long as it can. So what I want to do is kind of actually get these logos inside of the DOM, not just as backgrounds. And that way this line will go just as far as it needs to go and not a lot further like that. And the second thing I want to do really should have been one of the first things I did was kind of make it uh, responsive. Look at this. It turns into a holy mess when it, <laughs> when it gets shrunk down. So I want to take care of those things today in this video. That's what we're doing. Buckle your safety belts because it's going to be a wild ride. Okay, like I said in the introduction, the first thing I want to do is kind of get these uh, background images into the DOM. Right now, if we look at the client's code here in the clients.html, these are all, uh, where are we now? Client logos. These are all background images of this div. So I want to make this div actually an image tag. And doop, 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 boop, 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 doop, boop, boop, boop. source. There we go. And I'm going to call this alt. Uh, I, mean, I can find a better name for it later, but right now I'll just copy. Um, OK, so now it's going to be an image inside the DOM. Let's refresh and see how that looks. Wah! See how they're all sized all weird and wonky? There's some styles we have to do to take care of that. So let's jump over to our styles, go down to the logos, and we can see there's a few things that can work better here. Max width styles relative. Okay. Oh, wait, I just realized that these are crazy. This should actually be center and this should be space around. I don't know how I get those mixed up, but that's not the case. So the client logo, the reason they're all stretched up here and weird is because they have a height declared. Let's get rid of that because now they're no longer divs. They're, they're images which have their own natural dimension to them. So we have the height there. We can get rid of all these background styles. Cursor pointer. Yeah, I want to keep that. Margin bottom. Let's keep that. And uh, min width. We don't need the min width anymore. Uh, let's check a look at that. Okay. So this is, oh, this is like nearly exactly what I wanted, except for a few things. Um, their alignments are a bit off. You see here where the, the line on the bottom is kind of like right there. And then if I click on this one, it's a lot higher. Uh, so what I want to do there is kind of align these all to the bottom. Instead of aligning items space around, I could say align items flex end and that will like push them all to the the bottom well basically align them all to, to a single baseline refresh yeah there we go now it's not looking like that that gold bar or that accent color is jumping all around i like that a lot better okay um and i like how also this gold bar is the length that it needs to be right here on this one it's a lot shorter than this one that's because the logo is dimensionally shorter or like it's like you know not as wide of a logo, so the bar doesn't need to be as wide either. I like that a lot. Now let's take this bottom rule here that was made with drop shadows from last time and just make it a conventional border bottom. A little bit more easier to understand. I had a few questions about it. I just want to make it a little bit easier to work with. So instead of saying box shadow down here, we'll say border bottom. Uh, four pixels solid and the accent color okay but we need to make sure that see if I don't put anything on the other ones see how it kind of jumps them all up and down like that 
that four pixels needs to be accounted for for all the other logos, whereas box shadow it doesn't. Box shadow is just not like alter the um, the position of things in the DOM, the flow of the DOM, but border does. So I want to kind of compensate for those four pixels inside of the other uh, logos. So I'm going to do that by going up to all of the client logos, not just the currently active one, and putting a border um, bottom on that, and it's going to be, again, four pixels solid, but this time the color is going to be transparent. And refresh, and now they're not going to see that hop like you did the other time. Another thing that I want to do that I realized that I did in the, in the Photoshop design, but I didn't do in the coding, was that I made the active one fully opaque where the other inactive ones were like like kind of knocked down in opacity so let me turn the opacity down let me take it to 0 0.5 and then for the active client I'll bring it back up to one there we go now it's a little bit more pronounced which one is active I like that and I want to get that bar away from the bottom of the logo again but now since we're not talking about background images it's just like a regular image I can put some padding on it and that'll work pretty well let's say margin 20 padding bottom uh, 20 here we go looks good let's make it 10 it's a little much there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, that's it for those logos. I think that kind of makes and satisfies what I wanted to achieve with them. But now I want to make this layout work in a responsive environment, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is crunch it in and see where our problems are. And we have to think about what we can uh, retain and what we need to compensate for and what we can lose, okay? So the first thing I'm going to notice is that these left and right arrows just don't work well in mobile. I don't think you can ever see kind of that working well. It's swiping. It's not tapping left and right. So I'm going to set up a um, down here below everything. I'm going to set up a media query. Media max width will be 750 pixels. All right. And <clears throat> inside there, I want to just get rid of those um, client controls. Client controls. Display, none. All right, so when our uh, browser hits like right about that area right there, we're gonna lose those controls. See how they, they're in there now and they pop out right there. That's because once it gets any smaller than that, it's not going to be, they're not going to be useful to us anyhow. So we're just going to get rid of that visual clutter. And we're going to rely on a few other ways to control this, namely these logos down below. And we might support them in other ways and compensate for losing the client controls. What do we need to do here to make these logos, uh, make this kind of like area work better? Well, first thing I do need to do is stop kind of aligning these um, in columns. I need to break this into one kind of tube of information. And that will be by doing, let's see, I need to focus on the client belt. Client belt. And then the client unit. Now remember the client unit is both the, the avatar and the content inside there. So that client unit right now is currently set at display uh, flex, which is our, our really kind of convenient way to get those easy columns in there. But we have to turn that off. We have to turn that display col display flex off because we don't want that column anymore. We want it to stack up normally. So let's say display block. Now, since it's going to be stacking up and we're going to have the next section float under it, and we're going to be changing the length of the uh, the content. Right now, they're all the same um, the same length. And I realized as well another thing I realized actually is is that we you know putting the margin on the the top of the logos to push everything down is kind of a bad strategy because that's not dynamically based on the length of content in the quotation. It's based on like an arbitrary number, right? So I want to 
take that away by not making it position absolute, by making it position relative. So I'm going to turn this position here into a relative, and I'll say margin left is zero pixels, because it, it was negative 375, I think, and left is going to be now auto, which is the default as if it was reset. Okay, so what's basically right there is turning off display flex, and it's also turning off position absolute. It should kind of like slap everything down. Let's see how that works out. This is the wrong name. And there we go. Okay, so now it's stacked up on top of each other, and that margin on top of the logos is coming into play here, and the logos are squished. Oh, I know what that is. I'll take care of that in a second. Right here we have an we have a really good layout. I want to take this um, face. I just want to put a little bit of margin below it. Okay, client face margin below. And now in this client content here, I want to um, kind of bring that in from the edges there. I'll put a padding. Um, of uh, 0 and 30 pixels on the right and the left. And let's kind of restrict the, um, the, 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 the size of it anyway, because I, like, I don't like it how it is longer. If it's like around 700 pixels, it's kind of too big for me right there. So let's say um, max width is going to be 400 pixels. And then um, let's say a margin. Is zero auto. Okay, looks better, a little bit better. Let's bring in that client quote mark too. Mark uh, left. Let's bring that quote mark in to left uh, 15 pixels. Okay, cool. That looks all pretty good. Um, Okay, now that, that works well right now, and because now that this uh, you know, client unit is positioned relative, I can get rid of this margin on top of the logos. In fact, I wonder, can I, can I just make the whole thing position relative, not just in the... Hmm, let's go back up here to where we're saying position positive, or position absolute, and say uh, position relative. And what that does is actually allows me to get rid of the margin on top of those logos at, at, at any moment. Position, let's see, 50 pixels and then auto for left and right so it can be centered. Okay, now let's get rid of these that margin on top of the logos. Client logos, margin top 350, let's just put that at 50. That looks good. This window better for you. Okay. And then when we close this window, our left and right are going to disappear, and our uh, clients, uh, what is it called, the client testimonial will stack up, and then we can uh, start clicking our guy right there. Now I want to. See these logos, how they start scrunching up like that? That's bad news. Everything else looks pretty good, though. For those logos, let's say right in here. Actually, for those logos, I'm thinking, like, even if you did squeeze them in, like, even if I did stack them like this, watch. Clients, logos, um, is it flex, wrap, wrap. And this will make the logos wrap around, but even but if you think about it, like on like a little mobile device, this is going to be kind of weird. Like, like there, it's kind of disconnected from the content. You have to like scroll down to the next guy, click his name or tap his name, and scroll back up to see his name and and his face and stuff. But down here is his company, and then up here is his kind of like his attribution. So it's kind of weird. So I think what I want to do is I want to create a mobile navigation that's suited just for tapping, and it's suited more towards, um, I don't know, you know, like, um, 
that it'll show up only on mobile and these logos would, logos would just go away. So let's say client logos in this kind of mobile view, let's say uh, display none, and then, okay, now let's start to work on our mobile nav. So let's go back into clients and we want this to be a loop outside of the client's belt. And I wanna put it above the head so it's like more associated with, you know, like the client's name. You can click on the next one and the next name, right, will happen right there instead of below all the content and go back up and that crazy mess. So that's good for desktop, but it's not working for us right now on mobile. Let's take a look at um, making a loop and having these kind of, um, having the navigation be a more mobile native style. Uh, for client and and for right here. Okay. Now for each one of these, I want to just create like an easy uh, something to click on. So I'll just use a span and I want to put them inside of a wrap. So div class. Um, I'll call it clients mobile nav. And that sounds fine. It could be anything. Okay. Uh, now there should be four spans, or, or in other words, there should be one span for every client, and there are four clients there. Now let's go in and style these guys right here, and we'll say that they should, what did I call them? Clients, mobile, nav, something like that. <laughs> uh, clients, cli, and my my fingers are not ever spelling clients right. Mobile nav text align center. And then we'll say for every span inside of there, you get these styles. I'm gonna get cursor pointer. Hmm. And display. Let me scroll down here. Display will be inline block. And then um, size, I want it to be a little bit larger because it's gonna be on a, a mobile phone, so I'll say like 16 pixels, like a nice big target for your finger right there. Uh, 16 pixels and um, I'll make them circle, kind of styled like those little dots that were in our uh, skill section. So, so those are like um, border radius, 50% uh, uh, border. We could say um, solid, two pixels, and we'll do we'll use the the color like that blue color that I think it's just called background color, and then um, margin them out like. Zero pixels, uh, ten pixels, and yeah, that looks. I think that looked pretty all right. Centered. Okay, let's see what they look like. There we are. Okay, and then I want to call that uh, and active client client. Uh, you'll your border color will be accent okay now I want the active one to be called accent so what I need to do is run back into my JavaScript and treat it like one of those logos let's close this up see how see how mobile friendly that looks really styled well for your phone I like that let's go into our uh, our assets JavaScript add it to our JavaScript, just those those class names to make it function as if it were um, just like those logos down below, but now it's just these little circles above, okay? So the first thing we need to do is find the first one of them and make them active client. Clients, mobile, nav, span. Okay, that worked. Cool, and then do 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 clients mobile act, need to give active span. Okay, now let's take the same selector and throw it on the that same function that controlled the logos, and these guys will add. I mean, they'll basically 
act just like the logos, right? There's four dots, you click the one, and the one that corresponds will bring up the corresponding quotation, just like the logo. So we'll do comma, and then just what we wrote right there. And then this, hopefully, there we go, bring up the corresponding quotation. Now, now the reason this works, okay, just kind of ar architecturally, or information design wise, is because the name of the client's company is still on its quotation. It was supported by the logos, but it didn't rely on the logos, right? So it's still there, the, all the information is still there, it's just presented a little differently and it's optimized for the mobile phone, okay? One more thing we have to do to optimize it further is to say, I want the display none up here. And then I'll kind of when it's below, you know, 700 pixels or whatever it was, 750 pixels, I'll show it. So display block. Okay, so you're here, you're good. And then you're gone. There. And then you're gone. Cool. I like it. This makes me happy. Okay, that is just it for the quick, you know, uh, things I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to get those logos like tightened up a little bit visually and then also to make this work in a mobile uh, device, make it responsive. Like this is one of our goals for this uh, website. So that's it for today. A bit of, just a hopefully a quick video for you. And thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week when we continue on our exciting journey of the artist theme. Keep on hacking and we'll talk to you soon.